Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today, here is our Cultural Literacy 11 lesson. I wanted to go through this real quick for you. Uh, this is going to be similar similar situation to last year. Last year. Pff, I hope. It feels like it's been a year. Uh, last week where we are going to be... Um, I'm going to be just going through each of these notes for you, walking you through them as you take them. Feel free to pause this video at any time if you need to start filling stuff in. All right. So let's start with Achilles. So Achilles was an ancient Greek hero. He figures prominently into the Iliad, which is a very famous Greek epic poem. It's a very long poem that you're going to read next year in Mr. Wright's class, probably. Um, so Achilles, when he was a baby, his mother uh, received a prophecy. We've talked about prophecies in here before. Um, his mother received a prophecy, prophecy that he would die young. So to prevent his death, he took uh, she took him to the river Styx. So basically, Thetis, who was Achilles' mother... Um, heard that the river Styx, which was the river that separated the underworld from the world of the humans, was that if you bathed in it, that it would give you the powers of invulnerability, but that it could also kill you because it would pull you under by the current. So she took him by the heel with two fingers and dipped him down into uh, the river Styx. And because she didn't want to get pulled in, she basically left a little bit of his heel out where his where her fingers were and dipped him all the way in. So he grew up to become a man of great of war and he survived many great battles. Um, he was kind of invulnerable. He was a super great soldier. He became famous for his fighting ability, but he was eventually shot in the heel um, and, and died shortly after. He's remembered as one of the greatest fighters to have ever lived, but someone with a massive weakness. So when we're talking rhetorically about an Achilles heel, what we're really talking to about is our weakness, right? When it comes to nutrition, sweets are my Achilles heel, right? Unlike with Achilles, Mr. Wright's has no weak spots, heels included. So when, what we're talking about is here's something that is figuratively or I guess literally my weakness, right? Here's this thing that is important to me, but or not important to me, that I can't control or somewhere that I am soft, etc. It could be a physical weakness, but it also could be like in our sweets example, it could be sort of like more of a mental weakness. All right, next we have Cassandra. So this is also from the Iliad. So the Iliad tells the story of the the fight between the Greeks and the Trojans. Achilles is a Greek soldier. He fought for the Greeks. Um, there's a long series of things that are not that important right now, but basically um, Cassandra was a prophetess. A prophetess was someone that predicts the future. She... Uh, basically received amorous advances from Apollo, who is one of the Greek gods. So Apollo wanted to date him, date her, and she said no. Um, and so basically when she refused his advances, he he sort of like made her prophecies worthless because he uh, Apollo had given Cassandra the gift of foresight, the gift to see the future. And when she tried, when he took a pass at her and she said no, he basically cursed her with prophecy. So basically, the way uh, her prophecy worked after she said no to Apollo was that she would have a perfect vision of the future, but anything that she said, no one would believe her. So in the lead up to the Greek or uh, to the Trojan War, um, in the lead up to the 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 Trojan War, they had uh, basically everything she told all of her countrymen about the Greeks coming. And the Greeks Auto down shut down Troy, initiated. All of those things were a hundred percent ignored by the Greek, um, or by not by the Greek, but by the Trojans around her. Um, after the Greeks captured Troy, even though she had said like, "Hey guys, like the Greeks are coming," and they were like, "Shut up, Cassandra," and like, "Hey guys, they're Greeks," and that 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 horse that they gave us, and they're like, "Shut up, Cassandra." So eventually, the Greeks win the war, and they they take her from the temple that she's in. Um, and kind of violate the temple by going in and getting her and capturing her. And as a result, Athena, who is another one of the Greek goddesses, wrecks all of their ships because they violated the temple uh, that she was in. Now, rhetorically, this story of someone who predicts bad news and isn't believed, um, when we refer to someone as a Cassandra, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about someone who predicts something bad happening and is not, and either is not believed or just is someone who constantly predicts bad news. So like we might say... You know, a person that always feels like if I if I say I think my students are always going to fail, then I might be a Cassandra, right? When I say my lazy lady students, lazy students would fail. Now I don't have any lazy students. All of my students are amazing, so I know none of you would do this, but just theoretically, right? Or you know, we might also say no one believed Mr. Waller when he predicted that his players would get in trouble after the fight. They began to believe his predictions, 
right? He was like a Cassandra. Greek and Latin roots for this week. First, we have gin. Gin means birth, production, or kind, right? So a generation is all the people that are born at the same time, right? One day we'll remember Mr. Lawrence as the only member of the greatest generation. Oh, whoops, you can't really see that, can you? Here, let me briefly, boop. Uh, Mr. Wrights asked the students to generate an essay. They failed to do so. To generate something is to make something, right? Um, next, we have gram, which is letter or written. Uh, diagrams are written plans of something, right? The diagram of the castle, right? An epigram is a written quote that people put, uh, that people put at the beginning Auto of Auto shutdown canceled, powering uh, off. Um, so, you know, Graham, you also see it in words like Instagram, right? So an inst you know, Instagram instantly, you can write something about a photo. Um, yeah. So those are our two, Jen and Graham. Next, we have our uh, we have our logical fallacy, which is no true Scotsman or appeal to patriotism. In this form of a faulty reasoning, one's belief is rendered unfalsifiable because no matter how compelling the evidence is, one simply shifts the goalposts so that it wouldn't apply to a supposedly true example. This kind of post-rationalization is a way of avoiding a valid criticism of one argument. So basically what happens, a no true Scotsman argument is when you say, your example proving me wrong isn't true because it's not a correct example, right? What you're saying isn't true because it's not a good example. What you're doing is moving the goalpost where you're saying, okay, well, what I'm saying is true because X, and then someone says, well, X isn't true. And then you say, well, what you just came up with is actually an example of Y, right? Now, I know that seems confusing, but I can give you some more concrete examples. So let's look at the next page here. You committed this fallacy if you made what could be called an appeal to purity as a way to dismiss relevant criticisms or flaws in your argument. So I'll give you an example, right? Angus declares that Scotsmen do not put sugar on their porridge, to which Lachlan points out that he is a Scotsman and puts sugar on his porridge all the time. Furious like a true Scot, Angus yells that no true Scotsman sugars his porridge, right? You're saying this example that you gave proving me wrong doesn't count because it's not a real example, right? If I were to say... Uh, you know, real Americans support the war. And then someone else said, well, I'm an American and I don't support the war. And then I dismissed their complaint by saying, well, you're not a real American, so that's not a good example. I'm committing the no true Scotsman fallacy. I'm basically saying your example doesn't count. Um, you can see our second example here. Jordan claimed that no real American could be critical of the war because real Americans support our troops. Kyle replied that he was an American and critical of the war. Jordan's response was that Kyle was not a real American. Right? It's when you're saying your example to prove me wrong is not a real example. So that sums it up. That's our, this is our, uh, that's our uh, cultural literacy lesson for today. Uh, feel free to pause on your way through this. I kind of zipped through this, it, kind of expecting you to pause this video at different times. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Please fill out your notes that are attached to the Google Classroom here. And I look forward to talking to you soon.